Yeah, hi there, James. Hello, How mate. are you? I'm all right, but I'm not a food importer, so I would be, wouldn't I? <laughs> Quite. Yes, well, we, we are in the food import business. We import chilled foods, uh, predominantly for the convenience retail market sector. And um, these latest charges that have just been announced will cost us uh, in the region of another £100,000 per year. Whoa. Um, and that's just based on the figures provided on behalf of Dover and Folkestone, because those are the two government-owned ports of entry. Um, private ports of entry, we still don't know what they will charge. But fortunately... Uh, for our business, 90-odd percent of our product comes through Bover and Folkestone. Now, that extra 100 grand a year, that's on top of the circa 100 grand a year that we are already paying, thanks to Brexit, for customs declarations, which we have now been doing for three or four years. Um, and, of course, that is all on top of the sustained 25% devaluation of pound sterling against the euro and other major currencies that is the result of our decision to leave the EU. So products are already 25% more expensive at the factory gate. And thanks to the bureaucracy, we have increased order lead times. Our order lead times have increased from seven days generally up to as much as 28 days on some products from Italy. Plus the bureaucracy of dealing with all these declarations and so on and so forth and the cost for doing that. Um, this week, I was listening to a webinar with yeah, DEFRA right. about these charges. Yes. Um, so they've cut, they're, they, they're getting their ducks in a row quite late, if you pardon the pun, Daniel. Oh, I mean, well, they've only announced these charges within four weeks of them coming into it's action. Just so madness. I, I don't, it's just I don't madness. know how we're supposed to make any plans in you, advance. You don't for that. need to be in business to realise how objectively appalling that is. And part of the reason, this is me thinking out loud, is that. They are terrified of announcing bad Brexit news. They're terrified of actually announcing the damage that this is doing to the country because they're all still swanning around pretending that it was a great idea. Absolutely. And uh, you, might, you might recall that this actual thing that's happening now has been kicked into the long grass yeah. several times already by the government. And one time when they did it, under when Trust was in charge, yeah. Jacob Rick Smug, <laughs> he said, we're, kick, we're delaying this because it will add cost to business and we don't want to fuel inflation during the cost of he living He said it price. would be an act of national self-harm. Well, there you go, yeah. And, and, and but, here we are. And that's the anyway. bit. Well, that, you're, you're doing my job for me in a way because I, 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 I mean, you've just got to deal with this. And, and in a way, yes, touch wood, you'll get through it. And in a way, the, the, the fact that you're a good business person will mean that you well, will get... Much that, that. Well, you, you must be if you're talking about these sort of numbers already. You're obviously very good at what you do and, and that will equip you, hopefully, with what you need to, to stay afloat and continue being successful and profitable. But they have they have hobbled you or nobbled you or whatever the right word is. They have tied... They, they, they absolutely have. They absolutely have. They have cost us millions Yeah. Um, and caused us so much additional work which brings with it stress and requirements for people and all this sort of stuff. I mean, frankly, they have sucked the life out of the job by imposing all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And, and we don't know why. Well, we know why. They had no idea what they were doing back in 2016. They had no idea what, what it would actually... Right. Did you? Did you know as soon as that result dropped, did you know what was on the horizon? Or have you even been shocked by the um, scale of it? I had, I had a very good idea of what it would mean. Yeah. Um, um, I also had a quite a strong inkling that the country would take that choice, unfortunately. Yeah, same. Um, but, um, yeah, but here we but are. E e even though I, I am well-versed in it because it affects me directly and sure. my business directly, I, I still have been unpleasantly surprised by some of the things that have happened and, and some of the decisions that have been taken. Um, you know, it, it, it is, well, it's disastrous. Chris Patton, do you remember him, yes, former of chairman of the Conservative yeah. Party, was talking to Andrew Marr on this station a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Yeah. Now, credible individual, I would say. Same. Um, he suggests that Brexit has caused a 5% contraction of our economy so far. Yeah, five percent, and this now, bit hasn't seismic. even kicked in. It is seismic. Would, you're right. I would love somebody to actually point to me, point out to me a single benefit because I'm I'm waiting to discover something, and and hopefully be able to 
have a slightly better opinion of things. Um, but uh, I'm still waiting for someone to do that. Well, and, and, you know, someone can claim X, Y or Z or I could show you a Daily Express front page, but it's not going to undo the lived reality of what you're experiencing, that the, the absolute knowledge that you had a business operating successfully and the UK government came along and did something that adds millions to your costs. Well, everybody knows about the cost and the length of time that um, it takes for products to get into the UK. But we'll well, also... You say everybody knows, they don't actually. But, but Well, everybody that is involved in the food business. Yes, everybody in... <laughs> and yeah. importing. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I wish it was more awareness on the uh, normal consumer, normal people or how... So why, why do you think it isn't? I, I mean, because it, 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 in most circumstances, if people were seeing damage to their food supply chain and increases, avoidable increases to their food, it would be very, very, very big news. And it isn't, is it? No, it isn't. And I, I think the average Brexiteer, they think, oh, what don't we grow our own? I mean, the last time I checked, I didn't see any oranges in Manchester. No. <laughs> I don't think we will ever will. There is certain things that the climate are just, uh, we adjust to that. Also, we, we told the all the agricultural workers to clear off as well. So that might be a bit of a high tech, yeah. even if we were starting. So so how's it going to hit you? How's it going to directly uh, hit you? Well, it's hitting, uh, maybe it's hitting me, obviously, in cost, delays and everything else. But there's one problem that I would like to highlight yes. as well. There are suppliers in Europe yeah. that they actually refuse to to export to the UK because of the bureaucracy, the length and the headaches, that everything, but everything they just is can't changing. Be so the smaller yeah, you are... Yeah, they can't be bothered. It's a very small market. Yeah. They can uh, sell freely to 400 million people without any problems. And also the other problem I would like to highlight, um, on the run-up to the Brexit agreement, all we could hear is fishermen and, and farmers. There is no, I saw another sector that has been definitely very badly damaged by the agreement. Um, farmers are going out of business. The fishermen cannot sell the fish to the Europe. And the Europeans don't want to sell their food to us. So we are going to end up eating each other, aren't we? <laughs> I, I mean, you and Daniel, in similar lines of work, different sort of imports, but both heavily affected by this new two billion pound self-imposed economic sanction that the, uh, the, the experts yeah. reckon will will actually you know fuel higher inflation which hurts almost everybody 